Hi everyone. Today we are going to add a sound system and a new control system to this 25 year old LGB mogul. It runs fine, but the owner wants it upgraded to the latest and greatest. The battery that we're going to put in is in, from Airwire from CVP. It's 3,600 milliamp hours, excuse me, 3,400 milliamp hours, 14.8 volts lithium. It should run this locomotive for several hours on a single charge. The receiver is the Blue Rail 5 amp DCC receiver from Blue Rail. And it will allow us to control this locomotive from an iPhone. This is the sound decoder that we're going to use. It is a 6600 decoder from Soundtrax. And here we have a few odds and ends components. On the right is a normal single pole, single throw toggle switch that we'll just use to uh, turn the power on. And on the left is a uh, power plug that it, it that we will use as a charging jack and it is a little unusual in that it has three tabs in it and when you put the plug into it recharge the battery it automatically cuts out any connection to the decoder and to the rest of the electronics in the locomotive. It's time to figure out what systems are actually in this locomotive and what do they do. Not that we're going to keep any of them but uh, let's take a look. And the first place to look is under the coal load of, of the tender. Well, look at that. There's a bunch of components in there. And I earlier had taken out three nine volt batteries and I hadn't figured out quite what they were for. Turns out that uh, Two of them, I think, were actually powering the locomotive. They were nickel metal hydride rechargeable batteries. And I see a couple of components in here, something called a digital proportional radio control battery eliminator circuit. Uh, not familiar with that. And under the green label, it looks like some sort of decoder. MBS from backshoppacket.net and I suspect that was put in many years ago by my old friend the late Mike Falb. Now let's see what's below these components actually in the body of the tender. I have already taken out the four screws that hold the uh, frame of the or the uh, body of the tender down to its frame, so we should be able to just lift it off. And look at that. There's a whole bunch of very old looking electronics. And I imagine what this is is the original sound system that LGB put into their sound equipped locomotives. And how it all works and how it's all wired to get wired, I don't exactly know, but we are going to remove it all. Okay, here we have just the uh, frame of the tender with all the electronics removed. I'm going to keep the speaker. It's an 8 ohm speakers which is what we need and I've generally kept those old speakers in these installations because they still work and they sound quite good. The next thing we're going to do is try to take this locomotive apart. I've been told that it's pretty easy and that there are five screws. One here that holds the front of the boiler and there's supposed to be two on each side here. I see one right here, but I don't see another one. Anyway, we're going to try and take these 
three apart and see where we are. Well, I took those four, three screws out and it came loose at one end, but not the other. And then I looked a little closer and it looked like there were four screws that had to come out that were holding the cab and everything together. And so I took those out. And uh, my observation about the German engineering that goes into LGB is, uh, well, shall we say, sometimes over-engineered, or as their philosophy is, why use three screws when five will do? Anyway, it looks like uh, if we just take off just these uh, braces that hold the uh, the pilot on, which is right here. Ooh, that came off real easy. Ah, uh, there we go. Here we see all the connections from the umbilical to the motor to uh, on the printed circuit board, a wire coming from the chuff mechanism. Uh, one of the things we're not going to do is to take that circuit board out. It's, it looks like there's no easy way to get at it, so we're just going to leave it. The three colored wires, the green, brown, and white ones, lead to the motor. And we only need the green and the white one. The brown one is left over front as an electrical pickup from the wheel. This set of wires is from the chuff sensor mechanism, which you also are not going to use. This set of wires, there's four of them, goes to the smoke unit and the headlight, and we are not going to connect the smoke unit. It's time for a bit of surgery. So let's start clipping. Okay, earlier we determined that there were four wires headed to the front of the locomotive and that they would go to the smoke unit and the headlights. It turns out there are two black ones, a white one, and a brown one. And now what we're doing is looking at where the wires enter the headlight fixture from the bottom, and we see a brown one and a black one. So now all we have to do is figure out which of the black ones belongs to that brown one. Now to figure out which of the black wires is the active one, I'm going to hook an ohmmeter to the white wire. Excuse me, the white wire is not, we're not going to use the white wire. So I'm going to hook it to the brown wire and I'm going to hook it to one of the black wires. And we have a reading of about 25.5 ohms. Let me hook it. Let me hook the ohm meter to the other black wire. And let's see if we get the same reading with this one. No, there is no resistance. So, we found the two wires that go to the headlight. But another trick that I've learned, because one of the things we often don't know on these old locomotives is whether the bulb is an LED or an incandescent bulb. And I learned a trick to check that out is you get an ohmmeter reading in one direction and then you switch the leads, which I'm doing right now. And then you get an ohmmeter reading in the other direction and they should be about the same. And that indicates that it's an incandescent bulb because an LED will not have any resistance through one section and who knows what resistance through the other section. 
It turned out that when I tried to trace the circuits through the old umbilical that was there, I found the connections were not very reliable in that uh, there was apparently a wire break uh, and intermittent uh, connection within that old umbilical. So what I did was uh, replace the umbilical with these two, this uh, JST connector cable that you see here. Uh, they're readily available on Amazon and uh, I just cut it in two and half of it fits very nicely right here in the pocket of the tender and I just super glued half of it in and the other half just plugs in and now I uh, it was a six conductor but I don't need that so I took the two outside wires out of that cable and we have here two for the lights and two more for the motors. So right now what I'm going to do is just hook up the uh, headlight to two of them. While I'm hooking up the one headlight wire, I'm, or the first headlight wire, I'm gonna show you a little bit about my soldering technique. Uh, I have one here is people call a, a third hand it's re it's really handy and it's it's strictly for the situation in which you do need a third hand and i'll show you a bigger picture of it later but this is the best one i've found it's got long two long arms two short arms clips on the end and a magnetic base but anyway uh what i do generally is strip the end of the wires twist them a little bit and right here, you see a uh, bit of shrink, uh, heat shrink tubing. I slide that one, down one wire and just put the clamp over it to hold the wire and keep the thing from sliding. And then I take my soldering, put a little, put a little bit of solder on the soldering. And there's the joint. Unclip the wires, slip the heat shrink tubing over the joint, and then hit it with my hot air gun. That should last for a long time. I, I don't like to put connectors in that people can unplug and plug. I generally make all my connections unless they have to be unplugged later. I just solder the wires together. Uh, that just makes for me a much more reliable connection in the long run. Yeah, here's the view of the whole third hand. It's pretty heavy. It has these magnetic uh, attachments for the arms. Two short arms, two long arms. It can be moved around uh, with these clamps on the end. It's uh, the best third hand I've ever ever used or ever found. Okay, now let's check the wiring. What I've done, as you may be able to see here, I have attached a power supply set at seven volts to uh, one pair of the wires from the umbilical that goes to the tender. And when I turn the power supply on, either the headlight should go on or the motor should run and the, and the wheel should turn. So let's see what happens. Hey, success. Okay, I've hooked the other pair of leads to the wires that should light up the headlight. And when I push the power supply, the headlight should go on. Hey, 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 push it off, and the headlight goes off. Now comes all the fun of putting the decoder, the receiver, the battery into the tinder. And a couple of things we're going to do is start off with putting a just an on-off switch 
which is going to be a toggle. I'll drill a hole right here and uh, hide it right behind this uh, uh, yellow thing here on the side of the tinder. And here is an old programming port on the back of the tinder. Going to take that off, drill that out, and that will be uh, where we're going to locate the uh, charging jack. Fortunately, there is plenty of room in this tender for the components, so I don't have to worry too much. I think what I'm just going to do is take the battery and uh, set it down right about here and hold it down with double-sided tape. And then we're going to take the blue rail receiver and attach it to the battery here with double-sided tape. And we're going to take the decoder then and attach it to this side of the battery with double-sided tape. And that should do us. And here we have the tender all wired up. Notice the uh, black and, and brown wires here go to the rear light on the back of the tender right here. Uh, the components from the front to the back are... Of course, this is the 6600 decoder from Soundtracks. The big black thing here in the center is a 3400 milliamp hour battery, airwire battery from CVP. And here is the Blue Rail 5 amp receiver that will allow us to run everything from an iPhone. Over here is the on off switch, the back of it. And in back here, we can't see it, but is the charging jack and of course just the speaker and this is the original speaker that was put in 25 or 35 years ago when this uh, locomotive and tender were first built by LGB in Germany. Now all we have to do is put the tender shell back on, go out and set it on the track and see if anything works. Before we do that, let's take a quick look at the wiring. It's not all that complicated. Here is a scheme from the Blue Rail Trains website. It just shows basically power from its source, which can be a track with a battery, going to the receiver, and from there DCC signals going to the coder and the decoder essentially carrying out the commands to run the motor or light the lights. This is a quick sketch of the, of the charging circuit showing the battery, the blue rail DCC receiver, the on-off switch, and the three-prong charging jack. It's pretty simple. Uh, note that the red lines indicate the positive and the black lines indicate the negative from the battery.